Yo, welcome to another edition of The Huddle, my friends. You know what? It's funny because yesterday we broke records and live viewers. And I'm really hoping that we can do it today. I myself, all right, I was experimenting with the vertical live stream thing on YouTube, guys. All right. And I called Richie all excited about it. By the way, test it out. All right. It's interesting. But I did it a bit earlier. I'm hoping that I'm able to get some of those people that were tuned into the vertical live stream onto the huddle. If you're here, smash that like button for you, guys. It's completely free. It takes less than a second. Helps out the channel tremendously. We have a wonderful show for you today. Richie, how's life, man? What's good with you? Life is great, man. Woke up, breathing some air, and now we're excited to just continuously go live here on BetUS TV. The huddle. Life is great. What is this? Episode number seven. The feedback from the fans, shout out to everybody in the chat, because without you guys, this show is impossible, so I want to give a big shout out to Ronald Perry in the chat, a lot of other people in the chat that are supporting the Jets, and of course, what we do here on the huddle, presented by BetUS TV. Don't forget to hit that like button on your way in, folks. Really, really appreciate it, and we're so close to getting to the YouTube channel. That would be an awesome milestone, so help them out, folks. Hit that sub button. You guys know what buds to hit by now. We appreciate it. We got a good show today. 53 people in the chat, 27 like button smash, guys. Let's go ahead and get this up to 50. I definitely think that we can do that. We have a great show for you today. We're running some experiments. I didn't even stream prior to this show because I wanted to see what Bills fans are in here without me, and I see quite a few already. TD, what's up with you, man? I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm excited. We're about to hit the 5,000 subscriber threshold on the channel um, right here on Bet US TV. If you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe now. We got some great things that we want to talk about. Uh, man, I'm just excited about it. Um, and I actually went live right before um, the show. Uh, but this, um, what, what's this lateral stream thing you're talking about? Dude. I don't even know. Vertical dude, or something. Dude, dude. I got a, um, so I got this notification from YouTube saying that if you want more views, stream vertically on the YouTube platform, right? And I did it, and it definitely got some traction. I mean, granted, I got some people that weren't necessarily football fans, but I think they're still working out the tweaks. For somebody mm. like you, I think you'd absolutely love it. Mm. Uh, but guys, as many of you know, me and Richie spend a lot of time just, just sort of wanting to explain <laughs> technology right to TD. So that's gonna have to be about an hour conversation of how we can get them to start doing that one. But yeah, dude, seriously, vertical streaming is solid. Richie, and so you've done it too, right? Yeah, I, usually when I go to training camp, you know, I, when I stream from my phone, but I haven't really been familiar with it. I usually like to stream like a, through OBS and have like a whole production. So I never really done it vertical stream. I don't really know the difference in terms of like the, how it hits the algorithm, but it's interesting. Mm. Yeah, dude. it's definitely like a TikTok vibe, you know what I mean? That's right up your alley. If you guys didn't know, Dan Mitchell, the best, the number one NFL TikToker in the world, which is why he is here helping us host <laughs> the huddle on BetUS TV, baby. Let's do it. He keeps telling me that. You know what? He blows up my ego, and I absolutely love it. But all right, guys, listen, we have quite a show for you today. And we don't have a graphic for this one because this just ended up breaking about a half hour ago. I was scrolling through X, and I saw something about our good old, our good old friend Dak Prescott. All right. And allegedly, this was reported by Jordan Schultz that based off of the year that he had, when his contract is up for renewal or it's time for an extension or it's time for the Dallas Cowboys to revisit it, this guy has the audacity to say that he believes that he deserves to reset the quarterback market and get paid $60 million a year. That's not a full contract. That is fully guaranteed $60 million. All right. Let's go around the table. Let's talk to the co-hosts here. Let's talk to the other hosts on this channel. Let's hear exactly what they have to say. Does Dak have a snowball's chance in hell? Does he deserve something like this? Let's start off with TD. Uh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but let me start by saying you have to understand um, Dak Prescott built um, his contract on a four-year, $160 million deal. Um, he's been making um, an average of about 40 million each year, but this year, a lot of people don't realize this is the last year of his contract coming up and they don't realize he's already a $60 million cap hit this year. It's $59,455 is the cap hit. 
So the Dallas Cowboys have to decide since Dak Prescott is flexing his muscles and his leverage right now, knowing that the team has no quarterback unless they re-sign him right now on a massive long-term deal. He's throwing out six a year. He's trying to set the market. He's trying to make it so that at the end of the day, he can get whatever he wants. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Jerry Jones to move on. It is time for Jerry Jones to move on. At the end of the day, when you really look at his contract, there's no more guarantees. You don't, you don't, I mean, you have a lot of dead cap built in um, that you shouldn't have done by restructuring his contract for the next two years. But you might need to go ahead and trade Dak Prescott um, if he allows you to, because you let this contract have a no trade clause. So he has a no trade clause. He also has in his contract, you can't franchise tag him or transition tag him. So if I'm the Cowboys, I'm preparing to move on from Dak Prescott after this season at the, be at the best case scenario. Play him and accept that $59 million cap hit. And from there, you just got to deal with it and understand that you're not going to have a quarterback under contract the year after. Because we talked about this on a few shows ago. I think that the Cowboys have a plan, and that might be Shadur Sanders and Deion Sanders. Um, but it's all going to hinge on will the Dallas Cowboys budge and will they give him a contract extension this offseason to relieve the team of cap space to manipulate the cap. If they give him a new contract and he wants $60 million, he knows that they have to right now or he's hitting free agency next season. So the ball is in Jerry Jones' court. I think $60 million is absurd. And let me say this, ladies and gentlemen. The quarterback market is starting to get so out of whack. Who's going to stop the bleeding? Because if Dak signs, if Dak signs for 60, the next wave of quarterbacks are going to be signing for 65. The next wave are going to be signing for 70. And what people need to realize is when you look at the percentage of how much the cap goes up each year, that whole percentage doesn't belong to the quarterback. Every position group, every position's market value goes up by that percent. If we were following the old trajectory from 2010 in today's NFL, the top quarterback should be just entering into 40 million they should just be entering into the 40 million dollar range but what have we allowed the market to do literally with Dak Prescott is asking for is double what any other position will make in the NFL and it's getting more and more and more out of whack and what people don't realize is that the quarterback is making up for more and more and more of the team's cap space and that is a nasty thing to do. Somebody needs to cut it off and go ahead and bring them back, bark it right back down to earth by denying these contracts. See, you know what's funny is that he has a couple of void years attached right to his current contract. And next year, regardless, his cap number is at $36 million. So even if he does hit free agency, $36 million associated to Dak Prescott is going to be attached right to this dude's name. Well, well, that $36 million, um, Dan, is if he's off the roster. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if they re-sign him, if they have a minimum of $36 million they got to deal with regardless. Dak's days might be numbered in Dallas. That's, that's 14% as of right now. Because, I mean, you have to think. If the Dallas Cowboys don't extend him, which I'd like to think that, you know, with Jones, eventually he'll learn from his mistakes from the Romo days, from holding on to head coaches for way longer than what they should be or how long they should be there. And he does decide to go elsewhere, but we'll see. Richie, what do you got on this? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at his contract right now, and his cap hit for this upcoming season is just under $60 million. So... I mean, it's it's not like this is crazy to me, just based off of what the quarterback market is. 
Like for him to demand $60 million with the cap rising, first of all, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous money. And I think it's it's an absolute disgrace that we're even, you know, this is even a conversation that Dak Prescott wants this type of money. But you look at the contract and you break it all down. It's not that crazy when you just, you know, compare and contrast all the other quarterback contracts around the NFL. And you also add the fact that the cap space is increasing next year by a significant margin. So the fact that his cap hit for the 2024 season is $59.5 million, $500,000 shy of that $60 million that he's looking for to be extended. Um, that's a, that's an interesting number. Obviously, that has a lot to do with, you know, the structure of the contract, a lot of restructures. Like you mentioned, there's void years. There's $36 million attached to his name for the 2025 season, even $11 million in 2026. Um, and I just don't understand, like, I know that the whole notion with the franchise quarterbacks in the NFL, it's like, yeah, well, Dak Prescott's good, but is he good enough to take them where they want to go? And is he worth getting that significant type of contract? Now, Dak Prescott's coming off a phenomenal season in the regular season, right, numbers-wise, but then he crumbled in the in the playoffs where they needed him to step up the most. But, like, my thing is, I feel like fans need to realize it's a lot harder to just get a quarterback than you think. Okay, you get rid of Dak Prescott, then what? Like, who are you replacing him with? Who's going to be an upgrade over Dak Prescott? Of course, you can go over this free agent or this player in the draft. I mean, it's so hard to find the right guy to be your quarterback for your team. So, like, if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, you might not have a choice. You might need to just hope that Dak Prescott gets better and hope that you can continuously build around him because I just don't know where the Dallas Cowboys would go if they get rid of him again. There's probably going to be some quarterbacks available in free agency next year. There's probably going to be quarterbacks maybe available in the trade market. I'm not sure if the Cowboys want to reset and go into the draft because they're in a win now window right now. Um, so that's really where I'm at. I feel like this is just this is just the beginning. Every single time a quarterback or a wide receiver or someone in the premier position is due to get paid, they're going to reset the market. And and like I feel like a lot of people. Um, overreact a little bit too much to it. But the, re the reality of the situation is the cap space increasing. And I understand the whole percentages that the quarterback is getting way more percent of the whole cap than other positions. And that's for a reason. I mean, the quarterback position is a big time you know, deal um, in the league for a reason. That's why that's the case. But every single time there is a superstar that becomes available, or should I say that they, their contract and the due to get paid, they will be resetting the market. OK, and that is with every single position and Dak Prescott, he's good enough to demand a contract to reset the market, especially when the cap space continuously increases. Now, that's my thought of it. Do I think Dak is a top three, top five quarterback? I don't. But that's just a world we live in in the NFL. And I just become used to this. This isn't shocking news to me. Any quarter, any player at that magnitude, when they're due to get paid, their agents are going to ask for money to reset the market. So this isn't like news to me. That's like so shocking, at least not that I agree with it, by the way, but it's not shocking. And this so you're is, saying that Dak Prescott has played well enough to ask for a contract that resets the, to resets the market. I mean, he's coming off in second all pro season. So that's on his resume. And you look at the numbers in terms of, from his perspective. Yeah. Does he deserve it? No, but see, from his perspective, that's, that's the thing here from the agent, from Dak Prescott's camp. That's their job. They want their client to get paid. So they're ambitious. They're going to, you know, negotiating, Dan, you shoot for the stars and then you work your way down. I mean, you know how business works. You know how negotiating works. So it's not as shocking to me, I guess. So, so for me, here's where, uh, this is where it kind of like frustrates me, like with the whole um, NFL in general. Um, it's like, I understand what Dak Prescott is doing. I understand what his agent's doing, just like Richie just said. They're supposed to do this. But as a football fan, as an NFL fan, as a fan of my team, Dallas Cowboy fans right now, they should be mad. They shouldn't just accept it because Absolutely. that's they shouldn't just accept it because that's the landscape now. No, you can I mean you got to stand for something or fall for anything, and here's why. This is why they're not winning. This is why all of these teams letting these quarterbacks set the market. This is why they're not winning. And this is why when you go to Patrick Mahomes and you say, well, he made a big deal. Go look at the way his deal is structured and set up. Go look at the way that he barely is. A, he, he hasn't reached over a $40 million cap hit yet in his entire career. And so before but, he did reset the market, he won a damn Super Bowl. 
Yes, exactly. And, and at least do something like that before we're having this conversation. But furthermore on this, it's kind of crazy that the super like and, and he wants to take a pay cut, by the way. He wants to renegotiate his um contract so that they can bring in more weapons, by the way. But this is why teams aren't winning. So we can talk about this is the landscape. This is just what it is now. Well, be content with your team. Keep losing. And this is for fans out there. That, that are like, hey, what are we supposed to do? You got to stand for something or fall for anything. This is why a lot of teams aren't competitive. We're talking about $60 million, right, per year. When what you need to realize, this is not what other teams are dealing with. They're not dealing with 55. They're not dealing with 50 because nobody's actually playing on that number. But Dak Prescott will be playing on that number because he already has dead cap carryover. So even if they negotiate it, you know how guys sign these big deals, but the first few years, oh, he's only a $7 million cap hit in the first year. He's only a $22 million cap hit in the second year. But Dak Prescott, that goes out of the window because he has dead cap carrying from his previous um, contract. And that's why all of those things don't work. So at the end of the day, this is getting absurd what's happening at the position. But hey. You do what you do if you're an organization, but what I will tell you, this is going to be a direct result of why you're not winning because $60 million, you might as well go get an average quarterback, beef up the old line, get a run game, and, and make it the best defense in the league. Any You put $60 million today on any defense in the NFL, they'll double their production. So, so at the end of the day, there's smarter ways to do it. I, I just don't understand this way. Oh, my God. I mean, I saw a Cowboys fan on X or something. It was like last year. And they said, you know what, man? It's so frustrating that Jerry never makes any moves in free agency. He just sits back. He has no choice. Yeah. He, he has no choice. He can't make any moves during free agency. That's He's been doing this for a while with these contracts. Jerry Jones have been locking these big contracts in long term for a long time. And then they wonder why he can't make any adjustments in the offseason. And this is why. It's uh, We will certainly be keeping a close eye. I mean, I highly doubt that they are going to address it this season. I think that they'll probably wait until after the conclusion of next. However, this is Jerry Jones after all, so we're not sure. We could be getting some breaking news in just a couple of weeks uh, from it. However, uh, we have to talk about... Uh, once again, a player that is mentioned quite a bit on the huddle, right? His name is Justin Fields, all right? We have all gone back and forth saying, hey, you know what? He's staying in Chicago, all right? Front office has said that he's their guy. They're going to go on ahead and draft Marvin Harrison Jr. first overall, get him some help offensively. They have a bunch of money still. But now we're starting to hear, ah, on second thought, maybe it's Justin Fields to the Steelers. Maybe it's Justin Fields to the Dolphins or the Falcons. Who knows? Out of all the theories out there, well, it seems like Justin Fields has unfollowed the Chicago Bears <laughs> to grab. So does Justin Fields know something that we don't? Do you think he's already accepted the fate that Caleb Williams is going to be a Chicago Bear or Drake May? Richie, talk to me about your thoughts on this situation and where do you ultimately foresee the future for Justin Fields? I honestly hate this part of the offseason when we start looking at who's following who, who unfollows who on social media. It's one of my least favorite things. Like, I, it makes, like, who, who knew that Justin Fields was following the Bears in the first place? Like, how do we know he unfollowed him? <laughs> that, that's my point. Like, it could be anybody. This random dude searches up Justin Fields' is following, and they realize that the Bears aren't on it. So he happened to unfollow them. Did he ever follow them in the first place? Because I bet you if you go to every single NFL player, Go check. Do they follow their team's social media? Some of them don't. Does that mean they don't like their team? No, just because they're not on social media and they don't really follow their, you know what I mean? Like these types of things drive me nuts. Um, and it's happening right now with Sauce Gardner um, in a way because he's becoming our recruiting GM. So now everyone's like, Jets fans are like, oh, who's Sauce uh, following? And Sauce even said like, don't look at my followers because I follow everybody across the NFL. So I'm not reading too much into anything to do with him unfollowing or something that's just off season stuff that like people love to bring up because hey it's the off season we need something to talk about but when it comes down to Justin Fields I do think that his time in Chicago could be coming to an end um, I don't think this is because I feel like that I've always felt that way I feel like it'd be smart for the Bears to uh, trade um, trade 
Justin Fields to a team that Justin Fields can actually thrive in, like the Atlanta Falcons or the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Bears are in a situation where they could run it back uh, with their coach and reset the quarterback, uh, you know, finances on their team. So that's really where I'm at. I have not seen enough personally from Justin Fields to make me believe that he is going to be the future of the Chicago Bears. And they have a chance to get their whatever quarterback they want in the NFL draft. If I'm the Bears, it's a no brainer for me. Like there's no intangibles that's like, yeah, Justin Fields definitely has the ability to be a a legit like Super Bowl caliber quarterback. Now there's no guarantee that Caleb Williams or Drake May or any of the top quarterbacks in this draft class will be that way, but you get to do it where you can reset the market, reset your own finances on your team. And I think that Chicago bears, if they're smart, Justin Fields is out of there. You can also get some uh, draft compensation back in return for Justin Fields. And then you do that. And I know the other side of things, well, yeah, well, if they can trade out, they get a ransom. They can get Marvin Harrison Jr. They can build a whole team around Justin Fields. But me personally, I have never been impressed by Justin Fields. I've never really looked at him and thought, wow, this kid's got it. Like, never. Not it's once. To be honest. No, so. it's, it's funny that you say that. Because you said, I'm not even sure if any quarterback or, like, most quarterbacks follow their team. Just for shit, excuse me, for poops and giggles, I went on ahead and I looked up C.J. Stroud's. Instagram following does not follow the Houston Texans. Up, oh, CJ Stroud, unfollow the Texans. Everybody make it break. Trade, the trade them. That's my point, bro. This stuff doesn't matter. I like, I don't know why. Like, <laughs> oh, it drives me nuts. But uh, hey, it's the, it's the world we live in. Man, you know it's funny because like really like every like single year, Stephon Diggs deletes like each and every single one of the pictures on his Instagram, and it's a story every single year. It's a story. Like, oh my God, he deleted his entire Instagram, dude. He's out of Buffalo. He's been saying it for the past three years. I'm not to do this year. I could care less if it was true. But anyway, <laughs> DD, DD, uh, thoughts on this? Does Justin Fields see the writing on the wall? Uh, yeah, he sees the writing on the wall. I think um, in this situation, the unfollowing, um, I know some people don't pay attention to it, but I do in this situation because he did actually follow them um, a few days ago and then he did remove his unfollowing. Um, it's just that this is the week where teams are talking to agents, telling them their intentions. This is the week right here where everybody's getting their intentions. The, all the agents, the general managers, well, we don't plan on re-signing him. Well, we want him back, but we don't, we're not planning on giving a contract right now. We're going to let him hit free agency, test the market. If you want to come back with an offer to see if we can match or whatever. This is the week where all of those conversations are being had. Same thing with Xavier Howard. Did you see his tweet today? Oh, yeah, I did oh. see you tweet. Yeah, that. same thing where he said, you know, um, he he, it was a video of Kevin Hart or something um, where he was saying, or I don't know, it wasn't Kevin Hart, it was somebody. Um, it was basically, they were saying, sometimes you got to leave home. Sometimes you got to leave home for them to appreciate you. You know, and then when you go out there, you know, you can come back and you can appreciate it a lot more. And that's very cryptic, but he's talking about the Dolphins. Because the Miami Dolphins are keep on trying to get him to restructure his contract because it's ridiculous. And this is why three years ago I told him they should have traded Xavier Howard for this very reason. Because you're going to have him playing during his prime on a big contract while we're rebuilding. What's the sense of that? And now he's getting injuries and everything. He doesn't want to restructure because he got money coming to him. And he'd rather go somewhere else and get the money that he feels he deserves. So this is the time of year. So Justin Fields unfollow is a little interesting. But I will say this. It ain't that big of a deal. It ain't that no. big of a deal. Everybody kind of knows that you're either staying or you're going. And Dodge right now say you're going. Yeah, you know, I, I just I just saw something on Twitter, and I just sent it to our producer if he can put it up. But if he can't, no big deal. It was actually mm -hmm. C.J. Stroud being asked on a uh, the USA Today Sports Show, and when I think they were in when they were in Vegas about Justin Fields, what the Bears should do, and he said if uh, they should keep Justin Fields if they're smart, but you know, dot dot dot. So. That's what C.J. Stroud, the rookie of the year, the star of the Houston Texans, had to say. So he's obviously high on Justin Fields. I thought that was interesting. 
right? C.J. Stroud, again, was asked if the Bears should keep Justin Fields for next season, and his answer is they should if they're smart, but you know. <laughs> See, but, like, honestly, like, really, like, out of your entire life of watching these professional athletes talk about their other colleagues and their other, like, pro athletes, have you ever seen anything negative of them? Yeah, separate? they should definitely. Maybe Justin Fields sucks. Taylor Ramsey. <laughs> And so I feel like Ramsey's probably like one of the only ones that like actually went out and did an entire article. There it is. Um, wow. So we hear in the sound, he goes, well, but you can, yeah, you can read the uh, captions. Yeah, it's the Bears. Wow. Shots fired. No, she, she said it. The, the reporter said it because oh, it's the Bears. And then, and then he said, you said you that, know. not me. Look, it's the Bears. <laughs> and he laughed and he said, you said it, not me. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> See? I mean, no, I mean, honestly, I feel like any time that, you know, so, so the pro athlete has an opportunity of talking about like another player, you're not going to get the real feedback on that. I mean, I can't tell you how many like Bill's player interviews were going around when Nathan Peterman was named the starter. All right. Like someone in the Bills is like, oh man, I see a lot of Brett Favre in that guy. It was, <laughs> it was right before week one going into it. So how can you really, I mean, just like have an opportunity of taking it seriously. I mean, with Fields, man, I've seen people in the chat. Some people are saying that he can't read a defense. You know, he's Lamar, but, like, without being Lamar at the same time. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that he will, like, be better with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not entirely convinced that he will be better with the Atlanta Falcons. Um, sometimes I think there's certain intangibles that, like, you really can't fix outside of that. I mean, so unless you guys think that, like, say he goes to the Steelers, he's going to automatically make them a contender for the division, like a unanimous division, and like make a deep playoff run into it. I just He'd be an upgrade over what they have, that's for sure. So so as far as the passer situation, I mean, he could, be, he could get better. You know, um, writing him off would be the wrong thing. I mean, when I look at Tua's first two years, there wasn't nothing that made me excited about it there. But the last two years, he's definitely come on as a better quarterback. Um, I think Fields can, with the right system around him and the right weapons and everything around him, he could be a better quarterback. He could show to be more polished. You know, um, as long as you put the structure around him to keep him away from his flaws, any quarterback can, you know, look better with the right situation in the perfect world. So, um, but I agree, like with Richie, like there's not this immense thing that says he is right now whatsoever. But, you know, he's giving them – It's I just I, – I give him a chance because it's the Bears. So, real quick, back to X. And so, I haven't even asked you this question about uh, what are the Dolphins going to do with him this year? That, that's the big question. You know, what can what they do? What would you like to do with him this year? I feel like you got to play him one more year because of the contract. Uh-huh. You, re, you restructured his deal twice. And now you got dead cap stretched out for the next three years. I mean, when you look at it, because I know you're looking at it, Dan. When you yeah. look at it, I mean, you see how the you see how they stretch the dead cap out. Yeah, now it's bad. So it, it's ridiculous. It's like they want to cut them if you don't restructure. So you got to eat the dead cap, or you restructure them, which he's not going to do. You're not going to be given an extension, right? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, a, a trade, but who wants to pick up that contract with a guy who keeps having growing injuries that's a shell of himself from two years ago? I mean, it's a tough situation. Mm. So you could, like, see, see, the thing is, is that, like, so you could cut him post June 1st. Uh-huh. But, I mean, really, at the end of the day, that's just, like, being able to wipe your hands clean at that point. And, he might still have a little bit left in the tank. I mean, say like they say should keep him. I mean, so say they have two washed up corners thing. still. I love that. I, I mean, love that. say that miraculously he stays healthy. I mean, it's it's better because like a post cut June first. Mm. I mean, what can you realistically get to help your team out that year? Because the draft's over. Yeah, but post June first, what? <laughs> so so I mean, it's. I think you ride with him. Yeah, you should ride with him. I agree. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're going to have to, um, I believe, at this point. It'll be interesting to see what they do. Um, but it's, it's, it's definitely going to be 
they all of their options are open. It's just not a, a favorable situation right now. But um, when you said post um June first, Dan, yeah, um, would they still have dead cap though? Yeah, but for the following years, the savings would be almost triple uh, yeah. what the dead cap would be. But so, they would still eat dead cap this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You would save 18.5, like, right on the cap, and then you would have $7 million in debt. But, like, I mean, really by June. Oh, but it's not like, bad. Really after, and so really after June 1st, I mean, I suppose that you could make them the designation so you could go on ahead and utilize some of the money in free agency, right? But, uh, yeah, I mean, that right there is probably your only, like, option where, like, you would create, like, 18.5 million and then only 7 million dead. Yeah. And the following year, you'd add 16.7 million and 6 million dead and so on and so forth. So from what I'm seeing, I think a post-June 1st is your... Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. Though, as I think of it now, he will be a post June first designation. That way, he'll at least be able to um, enter free agency and give him a fair chance to get a um, go to a team and get a contract. Xavier, Xavier Howard, man. Xavier mm-hmm. Howard. Who what? cares about X? Sorry, I mean, what are we? Doing? Well, and, you know, Richie, we're, we're talking we're talking like Xavier Howard's relevant. Like, can we like just make that like a known thing that he's not relevant anymore? Like he's he used to be good a shell of himself, man. He really <laughs> he was a great player at one point. I'll give you that. He was a very excellent player in his mm-hmm. prime, but he's way past it, and he should not be a conversation. Oh man, I mean, <laughs> I just remember like when I first met TD. I think it was that first year where we got Byron Jones and X like lined up on like so the boundaries together, mm-hmm. um, and his hopes were so high. His hopes were so high for that CB duo. And why not? It, I mean, he it would have been epic, but Byron couldn't stay on the field, nor could X. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Shoulda, yeah. woulda, coulda. Guys, let me tell you what. We currently have 224 people watching this show right now. All right? And it still humbles us on a massive level knowing that each and every single one of you have cemented it in your brain to know that myself, Richie, and TD are live every single Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. EST for The Huddle, where we discuss all things NFL, all right? It's a hard, cold off-season, but we're going to keep you entertained because, as you know, we're going to be talking 20 minutes about what professional athletes are unfollowing on Instagram, making (laughs) sure (laughs) that you are up to date with everything. All right, guys, we got to talk about this because, speaking of social media, Speaking of social media, um, Gabe Davis, all right, he all butts went on ahead and posted an eight-minute long what seemed to be a goodbye video to the Buffalo Bills. He is a pending free agent. From what I understand and what I have seen, it doesn't appear that he has any interest in coming back to Buffalo. There was a video of somebody in the stands right before that final playoff game of like a fan screaming at him and calling him trash and Gabe wasn't having it. And then as far as his production, at least five or six games where Gabe Davis wasn't targeted at all, let alone lock down a reception, all right? Had an injury history. Seems like both of the offensive coordinators this year had no interest in putting him into this game plan whatsoever. From an objective standpoint, I kind of want to hear from my division rivals of their thoughts on Gabe Davis and whether or not that they think that He's going to go to a different team next year and absolutely ball out and perhaps even be a wide receiver one for somebody. Uh, Starting off with TD. Gabe, Gabe, Gabe Davis. Oh, boy. Trouble in Buffalo, ladies and gentlemen. That was not a cryptic tweet. It was a direct tweet. (laughs) It was clear as day. Pay me. And when I say pay me, I'm not talking about chump change either. Look at what I've done over the last few years since I came into this team. I have been number one, number two, top ten in so many categories that matter. Don't play with me. Give me my money or I will go somewhere where I can get it. Now, what is Gabe Davis worth? I don't know. 
I don't know. Uh, do you have an estimation, Dan? I mean, let's see what Spot Track has to say. Right. Yeah, Rich, Rich, do you have an estimation, Richie? I'd say he's flirting around 15 per. How many years? For I mean, think of it this way. Alan Lazard got a, um, a $44 million contract from the Jets for four years, $11 million AAV. And That's he's the Rodgers effect. Yeah, of course. Rodgers made him good, <laughs> and then he sucked on the Jets in his first year. So a guy like Alan Lazard got $11 million. I think Gabe Davis will get like 15 to 17. 15 to 17. Se- <laughs> See, the thing where, is, where they going to get that money from? No, but I'm just saying from the open market perspective, you got to oh, look okay, at it. Like, okay, the, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pe- people have to realize that, like, I, I feel like the word overpay gets thrown around all the time. It does. And you just got to look at the positions, like the other players at your position and what they get paid and, like, the production. Like, in my opinion, the word overpaid gets so overblown. Remember what everyone said about Christian Kirk when he got signed by the Jaguars? Do you guys think he's overpaid anymore? I yep. mean, yeah, what you see the production that he's had with Jacksonville? Still overpaid. See, see, see. This is good. What do see, you mean he's still is, overpaid? No, 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 no. See, y'all are victims of what's been happening with the market. It's like it's like a carton of eggs, right? We know that they're supposed to be three dollars. Now, now you look at it today. <laughs> there was a point where they went to eight dollars. You think I'm gonna look at six dollar eggs and be like, oh no, that's that, that, yeah, that's perfect. No, I still know that it's overpriced. Yeah, but you so got to look at the cap. You got to look at the caps evolving. Every position is going to get paid more money yeah, every single Richie, year. Richie, the cap isn't evolving that much. That's the point. The cap isn't evolving that much. The cap did not increase 100% over the last seven years. The wide receiver market increased 100% over the last seven years. Because wide we receivers to- are becoming more valuable because it's a pass-happy uh, league now, which bro, hasn't been seven years ago. You know that. Bro, they're not you know becoming that. They're not becoming more valuable. These are ebb and flows. These are ebb and flows in the NFL that happen every seven to ten years. And, and, and trust me, three years from now, we're gonna be right back on the running back train. And then we're yeah. gonna go right back to the um the wide receiver train. So three years from now, we're gonna be on a running back and a linebacker train. Right now, we're on a wide receiver cornerback train. This is this is normal. It's you know why? Because they're taking these cap increases and they're dumping them in one area, letting the other one go down. And then when you can't win that way, and you're like, we need a better running game, then they start dumping money over here and letting that go down. Why can't we just have balance and we get out of whack and we accept the out of whack and say Christian Kirk's deal was just fine? We were all shocked, but Christian Kirk deal is what catapulted everybody else deal getting ridiculous because there were too many receivers way better than him how are you gonna let a a good receiver set the market over the elite receivers that was a desperate team at the time you can't tell me jacksonville wasn't desperate but yeah, you always have like- three to five desperate teams that screw up the cap a team like jacksonville needs to do that in order to get talent into their team Right. Which and, is true. and exactly. So like in my eyes, it's like, what do you want Jacksonville to do? Sit on their hands and have no weapons for Trevor Lawrence? Or do you go out there and offer him that contract? That's the only way you get him. It used to be the case with the Jets, but the Jets have to pay. We call it a Jets tax. We're so bad that we have to overpay in order to attract talent. And then it would bring us backwards five years. For example, we had to give Le'Veon Bell that contract, which was an absolute disgrace at the time, completely overpaid for him, and we would be paying Jets tax. Now, when Rodgers came, we actually have people coming for pay cuts. That's a different conversation. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out in our favor for obvious reasons. But I honestly don't feel like, you know, you look at the market, you look at the wide receivers, and I, I mean, I can admit, at the time, the Christian Kirk contract was ludicrous, but then you compare it to all the other contracts around the NFL, like it's, he's, and you look at the production, that's what a, a wide receiver putting up those types of numbers should be getting paid in this market, in my opinion. You know the teams that are having the most success? They're ignoring the market. They're ignoring um, what, what, what Jacksonville did. Everybody else is paying attention because agents are supposed to use that leverage. Christian Kirk got that much. Man, Tyreek getting 30. Chiefs, we're going to keep winning. We're ignoring that crap. Tyreek, we can't give you 30. 
See, that's what that's all I'm saying here. I'm not arguing the market. The market is the market. You can't change that. This is how much that player is going to cost. But the teams that's winning are ignoring the market. You're bringing in these high price players, and they're not getting the job done. They're just not getting the job done. And you only – in... go ahead. No, I was just going to – off topic, but still on topic. Do you know who's going to reset the market when he becomes available? The guy that's been position? very polarizing on this on this show so far. What, what position? Corner. Sauce Gardner. Oh no, I'm um, really Jaylen curious. Ramsey? Here you had his time. He's not he had his big contract. You know that. Yeah. I'm just, as a Jets fan though, because like speaking of like Bryce Huff, that we can't retain Bryce Huff, the reason for that is because we need to save money for Sauce and Garrett and the studs that we have. Mm. Because when Sauce becomes available to get paid. Especially if he say he's in first team all pro next year. Like I know we have all these debates and stuff. Like what Sauce is doing accolade wise has never been done ever at his position. So like mm -hmm. so he's gonna reset the market. And I'm like kind of scared <laughs> from a Jets fan perspective. I want to get all the money in the world. I want him a Jet forever. I do not want him to get paid anywhere else. But like that's gonna be an interesting thing when that happens. So what is the market for because quarterbacks who, right now? So guess right now who the highest paid corner in the league is. Certain. Are you? Are you, are, you, are you saying on an annual basis or what the highest cap hit is this year? So value, um, so value is Denzel Ward at a hundred million. And then Probably. annual, it's with uh it's with the Jire Alexander. And same thing with Denzel Ward, 21 and 20. Sauce probably gonna get yeah. like 40. I'm year. saying, bro, with with the cap increasing, sauce is gonna reset everything with the cornerback position. Everything. Mm. See what I'm saying? Like, there's there's some players like that that's gonna re like change everything, and that's gonna be sauce. And um, I don't know about and, and you got to think of it this way: Garrett Wilson was in the same exact draft class, Jermaine Johnson the same exact draft class. All three of those players will be eligible to get extended at the same time. How the heck are the Jets gonna handle that? And Brees Hall. So I don't know how they're gonna figure that out. That's a whole Jets discussion, but um. I don't know if Garrett's going to reset the market because there's a lot of wide receivers better than him. But Sauce is someone that I'm really looking at to see, especially you look at it now that Dan just brought up. Denzel Ward and Alexander are the highest paid corners at only yeah. 20 and 21 million. That's it. Yeah. Um, That's well, gonna... what, well, what, what is Ramsey getting? I can pull it up right now. Well, Ramsey, uh, Ramsey's well, contract hey, was like weird. because like, He's on like a two year deal. Yeah, Ramsey signed the um dude, he's Ramsey's cap hit this year is 27 million. Okay. okay um, um, the base salary though is 14.5. Let's go back to corners. In fact, you know what? I definitely thought of a perfect topic for tomorrow. I think Ramsey reset the top reset the uh, market at when he got signed a bit initially. Let's see what we got. I, I did think of a topic for tomorrow as well, Dan, in the middle of the show that I wish we were able to talk about it, but we'll save it. Ramsey is well. I'll tell you what, Richie. And so, why don't you pitch it to me right now, live? Because you want to know why? Because there's no updates with the uh, uh, with the franchise tag. And by the way, Ramsey uh, he signed a three year contract, fifty five million. He's he's ninth, and I'm sitting at Trey White, who's above him right now. Which so, so here here's the deal. Ramsey's average, pretty much what I'm seeing is about 18 million a year, somewhere roughly in that range, right? It's 18.3. Yes. That was his restructure with the Dolphins. But when you go back, and let me show you what I mean with this quarterback situation. When you go back to Ramsey's deal with the Rams, which was 2020, 2019 when he signed it, his deal with the Rams was five years, 100 million, which was 20 per. What is the top corners making annually now, Dan? You just said it, 19 or 20? Yeah, 19 or 20, average annual. Do you see what I'm saying? So so when Sauce goes to 22, that ain't going to be nothing out of whack. But if they were on a quarterback's trajectory, they'd be in the 30s right now over the last five years. That's all I'm saying with this whole salary cap thing. Follow the increase every year, but don't just – throw the increase aside and start giving all kind of money that belongs to other positions. That's what's happening. The cornerback position is steadily going up slowly like it should be, but not mm -hmm. the quarterback position. They're just throwing everybody's money on. 
Mm. Yeah, interesting stuff. I love it. That's a good problem to have for Fear the Jets. But they got to take mean, it in. Dude, I'll be honest yeah, with dude. you. Man. Like, I'm like scrolling through some of these contracts based off of position. And I'll tell you what we're doing tomorrow. So what we're doing <laughs> tomorrow is that we are highlighting the top five, like, most, like, most, like, overpaid. I think I'll, like, make it a game Ooh. show. And I'll go Active. on and I'll read stats and how much they make. And we can determine whether or not that that was an overpay or if that person is robbing. Oh, it's I'll a tell lot you this right, right here about, about this. What the bad organizations do, something that the New York Jets have done for a long time, they stopped doing it recently, luckily, since Joe Douglas came in, is when a player thrives on another team and then they hit the open market, and you see it still every single season, and they peaked, another team gives them a contract for what they did on that team. Mm -hmm. And then they get paid, and then they come, and they're never the same. And that is why the Jets have sucked my whole life. And hopefully Aaron Rodgers could fix that this year. That's not the conversation here. I'm just bringing up the Jets because I witnessed it. Le'Veon Bell, who I brought up, perfect example. Prime on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We're going to pay you. We're the Jets. We're going to give you a huge contract for all the stuff you did in Pittsburgh. Congratulations. Then he comes here and he stunk. Tremaine Johnson, elite cornerback on the Rams. He got signed with the Jets, the top cornerback money at the time. We paid him money because of how good he was on another team. And then he came to the Jets and stunk. So my point is the good teams are the ones that find value. You know what was the best free agent signing the Jets have had in a long time? DJ Reed because he didn't mm. peak. We gave him a really good contract, and then he peaked on the New York Jets. Right, So you can't look at free agency as I want to get the best player available because there's a lot of options out there that already hit their peak. And you don't want to be that team that's overpaying for players that already you know, uh, hit their prime and then they, they go into the gutter. You see it all over the place. And that's why you don't build teams through free agency. Those smart teams are the ones that find the diamonds in the roughs, find the bargain contracts, and you have a culture and you have a set standard in place where you can bring someone in and develop them into your squad, into your team. The Jets have that on defense where they can get guys undrafted free agents. They can get guys for cheap and make them studs. Can't do it on offense because there's no culture established on that side of the ball. But the Jets' defense is a perfect example of that. They brought in, for example, Quincy Williams, uh, the waiver wire claim from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then they developed him year by year by year, first team all pro. That was a phenomenal job by the New York Jets. Bryce Huff, undrafted free agent, right? Undrafted free agent. He was developed perfectly. And now, unfortunately, the Jets are not going to be able to retain him. He's about to get paid a big contract. Now he's someone that is, I want to like do the opposite. He's someone you should pay. If you're an NFL mm. team out there, Bryce Huff didn't hit his peak yet. He is on the way up. He is still rising. So I know I'm contradicting myself, but I just know Bryce Huff well, cause he's a jet. He hasn't been given the opportunity to really unleash his wings. So that's really what it comes down to it. The bad teams try to build through free agency, steal all the headlines. The good teams understand that you got to look into the B list and C list free agents. And, and, and I want to second that on Richie with the Jets. See, the Jets, they're very good at doing that first part, but it's a two-parter, right? It's developing a guy and making him a legitimate NFL dog, like a great player. But then knowing that he has an expiration date because you're not going to be able to afford him long, do you have the guy behind him already ready? And the Jets, the Jets do, do good with the first part. Now, the second part, we'll see how that turns out. But, but you know what they did? What, Can I just tell you? Because they were talking about Bryce Huff. This is a big debate in Jets land. Our first round pick last year, mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys don't remember it because he didn't play a lot, was an edge rusher, Will McDonald. And at the time when we drafted him, we're like, an edge rusher? We don't need an edge. We have Bryce Huff. We have Jermaine Johnson. That's our best position. And that draft pick was simply because they knew that Bryce Huff was going to break out this year and walk, and Will McDonald was going to take his spot. And now we have a fresh guy going into your number two to replace Bryce Huff. So that's the one thing the Jets are really good at is having a long-term perspective with their defense and they have that's someone ready good. to go right next. That's good general manager work right there. Those are the things that go unnoticed. Um, I don't know if we have time, Dan, but I wanted to bring a point on on that with the Dolphins. No. Um, we're the flip side of that, which which sucks. You know, um, we, we'll bring a player in. We'll do the first part like I named to you, Richie. Like, we have people on our roster with this situation right now. 
uh, take Emmanuel Ogba. Okay, we we brought Emmanuel Ogba into Miami, and we signed him on a two year, fifteen million dollar deal, defensive end. Okay, now seven and a half million dollars a year. He absolutely balled out. Now remember, it was under Brian Flores' system with the zero blitz, so a whole bunch of guys got a lot of free rushes, right? So now we've gotten rid of the head coach and we bring in different defensive coordinators, different way that we run a run a defense. And now we want to make him not as much zero blitz, but make him a vocal part of getting at the quarterback. And we re-sign him on a four year, $65 million deal. And the first year we paid him 11 million. He got hurt. The second year, last year, he was a bench player, a backup for $17 million sitting on our bench. And, and the only reason we played him is because of the late injuries, you know, with Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, and we brought people off the streets. We didn't want to play him, literally. So here we are this year, and we owe him $18 million, but they're going to have to cut him. You talk about money that you gave out that you just waited as, wasted as an organization. Now, as a man, I'm happy for him getting his cash. But from the organizational standpoint, just a waste of money. And you were going off of a whole different defensive scheme. Some of these guys don't fit the new defensive scheme. So even if you bring them from another team, is it even the same scheme you're going to be running? And some teams don't matter. They just look at the numbers and know that it's a top player. Bring them in. And that's where a lot of teams get in trouble. Man, I mean, really from like the Bills perspective too, I could really only think of like one bad contract, which is just sort of hanging over our head. And that's that Vaughn Miller contract, man. Mm. Like, I'm looking back at it right now. And like, we're stuck with the guy. Like we just have to hope that he comes back. But <laughs> I'm still asking myself, what the hell was going through Brandon Bean's head when he decided to sign a 33-year-old right at the time, right? to a six-year deal, a 33-year-old to an absolute six-year deal with massive cap implications. Like next year, he's going to account for like 10% of our overall cap. Same thing in 2025, 2026. Uh, bad contracts, man. Wow. The worst. Bad contracts these days. But, I mean, now with the NFLPA, though, right? I mean, so will it improve? And so will it improve, especially with how, like, all these agents and with the NFLPA and stuff like that? I mean, I think that we're just going to have to accept the fact. But I'm not sure if you guys did see, but it, it looks like the salary cap is about to be significantly higher than what was initially anticipated. It's going to be around 250 rather than, like, low 240s. So we can thank Swift for that. that was Taylor Swift. So $8 million more dollars? Yeah, that's what they're saying. Yeah, it's not final yet, but they're saying that it's going to be close to 250. So the NFL ended up seeing quite a bit. That's great. Just know every time we hear that, that's good news for the NFL. That means that the NFL mm -hmm. is bringing in the revenue that they want to bring in, and they can even afford more money for expenses for each franchise. So that's excellent stuff from the longevity perspective of the league. Because who knows how long the NFL will be active. Absolutely. Hopefully forever, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, guys, I'll tell you what. We're definitely going to get to the free agent landing spots sometime this week all right but like i mean knowing like three of us we just go in tangents and so we just go on tangents and like we just go down but hey you know what man i'm sitting here looking at the live chat i see 234 people in here enjoying these little tangents that we go down when we're discussing completely resetting the market based off of the positional value have 158 people have like this have like this show Already, man, and we get that like button. The like button. Oh, my God. And, and, and just, All right, Richie. What's your send off to the chat? And why don't you tease us for the topic you have in store for us tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, it goes in line with the free agents, right? I don't know if you saw. I'm sure you saw it, Dan, but Sauce Gardner has a new name in the offseason, and it's Le Sauce, which is the word for him being a GM. He's been recruiting. Sauce Garner is active. He had a whole scouting report on Brandon Ayuk that I made a TikTok on. He's, uh, he's calling up Mike Evans. He's very active on social media, and he's trying to, he's trying to promote 
the New York Jets and actively recruit players to come play for him. And because he understands how important it is to get a wide receiver. He understands how important it is to get some more offensive help. And I think that's uh, an interesting topic. So I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts that Sauce is so out there on social media, actively, publicly. And even the Jets posted a funny uh, like, like uh, graphic of him at a GM's like desk of it saying Le Sauce. And like they're, they're like involved in it now so sauce is an active gm oh. and i think it's hilarious so i thought that'll be a fun uh conversation to have tomorrow oh it's all right td what about you man See, you that along right there makes me want him to get 40 million like he's more than just a, a player like he's his personality is great he's recruiting like he's like the face of the team like i mean how can you hate on sauce man i don't get it he holds <laughs> on to recruiting yeah man holding everything <laughs> what's up td <laughs> Uh, no, um, listen, man. First off, um, salute to the chat. It, it, did we just break a new threshold? Three hundred and fifty-three people in the building. I think, I think it, it matches last yesterday. So we wow, that's dope. Today. So like the show is catching the traction, and like I ended up saying, I ran a test because I wanted to see if people would come in without me reminding them. I think that we've cemented it right in their heads. Yeah, I didn't live stream either. Friday at 3 p.m. EST. 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Y'all punch that like button. And listen, we added another 30 subscribers while we've been live. We are less than 20 subs away from 5,000. So if you're watching right now and you have not subscribed to the huddle, then get in the huddle and hit that subscribe button, all right? We're just right here at 5,000. Help us get there today. Love you all. Remember, every day at 3, this is your one-stop shop. For all things NFL news, we talk about it all, as you can see. But, yeah, um, great show today. And for the mathy people, the salary cap basically is an increase of about 3% over what they projected. That $8 million increase is a 3% increase, okay? So the way general managers look at it, the value for each position group goes up by 3%. But all of that is out of the window when you give all that $8 million to one, one position. So. Just FYI. So it'll be interesting to see what general managers do, knowing that they're going to save a little bit more money um, this offseason. Thank you all for tuning in. We love you all. Shout yeah, out to the chat. We appreciate it. And then last but not least, giant shout out to Kevin Lee for saying the best daytime sports show during the week. Nice. Look at that, boys. Share the video. Uh, we're making it. <laughs> Guys, smash that like button on your way out. Subscribe. We'll see you tomorrow for yet another episode of The Huddle. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed the show, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, folks, and subscribe to the channel. If you hit that notification bell, you'll get notified every single time we go live or make a video here on BetUS TV. Also, do not forget to check out more sports content over at BetUSTV.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can't wait to see you guys again soon.